Assalamu alaikum fam. Hope you're doing well. Hello. All right, so we're continuing our reading of the hadith of Sahih Muslim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I ate some really spicy pasta that I made. It was really good. All right, let's begin. 141. A similar report as number 140 was narrated from Umar bin Hani with this chain, except that he said, Allah will admit him to paradise whatever be his deeds, and he did not say through whichever of the eight gates of paradise he wants. Okay. Got it. It was narrated that as he said, I entered upon Ubara bin as while he was dying, and I wept. He said, Take it easy. Why are you weeping? By Allah, if I am asked to bear witness, I will bear witness for you. And if I am asked to intercede, I will intercede for you. If I can, I will help you. Then he said, By Allah, there is no hadith that I heard from the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, in which there is anything good for you, but I narrated it to you, except for one hadith, which I will tell you today, since I am about to die. I heard the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, say, Whoever bears witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that Muhammad is a servant of Allah, Allah will forbid him the fire. Okay. It was narrated that Mu'ad bin Jabal said, I was riding behind the Prophet, peace be upon him, and there was nothing between him and I but the back of the saddle. He said, O oh, Mu'ad bin Jabal, I said, Here I am at your service, O Messenger of Allah. Then he traveled along for a while. Then he said, O oh, Mu'ad bin Jabal. I said, Here I am at your service, O Messenger of Allah. Then he traveled along for a while. Then he said, O oh, Mu'ad bin Jabal. I said, Here I am at your service, O Messenger of Allah. He said, Do you know what is the right of Allah, the mighty and sublime, over his slaves? I said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, the right of Allah over his slaves is that they should worship him and not associate anything with him. Then he traveled on for a while. Then he said, O oh, Mu'ad bin Jabal, I said, Here I am at your service, O Messenger of Allah. He said, Do you know what is the right of his slaves over Allah if they do that? I said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, that he should not punish them. Interesting, I didn't expect that ending. It was narrated that Mu'an bin Jabal said, I was riding behind the messenger of Allah on a donkey called Uver. And he said, O oh, Mu'ad, do you know what is the right of Allah over his slaves and the right of his slaves over Allah? I said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, the right of Allah over his slaves is that they should worship Allah and not associate anything with him. And the right of his slaves over Allah the Almighty and Sublime is that he should not punish the one who does not associate anything with him. I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, should I not tell the people of this, do of this good news? He said, do not tell them lest they complacently rely on it. Complacency. That's interesting. It was narrated from Abu Hasin and Al Ashha bin Sulaim that they heard Al Aswar bin Hilal narrating that Muad said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, O oh Muad, do you know what is the right of Allah over his slaves? He said, Allah and his Messenger know best. He said, that Allah should be worshipped and nothing should be associated with him. He said, Do you know what their right is over him if they do that? He said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said that he should not punish them. So that's interesting because it's like you're commanded not to associate partners. If you don't do that, 
it's good for your accounting, basically. It was narrated that Aswar bin Hilal said, I heard Muad say, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, called me, and I responded. He said, Do you know what the right of Allah is over the people? And he narrated a similar hadith as 145, which is what we just read. Nice. It was narrated that Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, said, A group of us were sitting around the Messenger of Allah, and Abu Bakr and Umar were with us. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, got up and left, and stayed away from us for a long time. We were afraid that he might have been harmed by some enemy when he was on his own, so we panicked and got up, and I was the first one to do so. I went out looking for the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, until I came to a walled garden belonging to the Ansar of Banu Najjar. Cool, walled garden of the Najjar tribe, who was an Ansari member. Wow. I went around it, looking for a gate, but I could not find any. Oh, <laughs> sounds like something I would do for security. Uh, poor male person who has to deliver packages. There was a small stream that entered through a hole in the wall, coming from a well outside the garden. So I drew myself together like a fox and entered upon the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. He said, O Abu Huraira, I said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah. He said, What is the matter with you? I said, You were among us, then you left and stayed away from us for a long time. We were afraid that you might have been harmed by some enemy. When you were on your own, so we panicked, and I was the first one to do so. I came to this garden and drew myself together like a fox, and these people are behind me. He said, O oh, Abu Huraira, take these two sandals of mine, and whoever you meet beyond this wall, who bears witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, with certainty, in his heart, give him the glad tidings of paradise. The first one whom I met was Umar, who said, What are these two sandals, O oh, Abu Huraira? I said, These are the sandals of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him who sent me with them to give glad tidings of paradise to whomever I meet, who bears witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, with certainty in his heart. <laughs> Umar struck me on my chest so hard that I fell down on my backside and said, Go back, O Abu Huraira. So I went back on the verge of tears, and Umar followed me closely. <laughs> Why did he hit him? The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said to me, What is the matter with you, O Abu Huraira? I said, I met Umar, and I told him what you sent me with, and he struck me on my chest so hard that I fell down on my back. And he said, Go back. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, O Umar, what made you do that? He said, O Messenger of Allah, may my father and mother be sacrificed for you. Did you send Abu Huraira with your sandals to give glad tidings of paradise to whomever he met who bears witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah with certainty in his heart? He said yes. Umar said, Do not do that, for I fear that the people will complacently rely on that. Let them carry on striving to do good deeds. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Yes, let them. Interesting, the relationship between Umar. <laughs> I kind of hit him. It's kind of mean to laugh at, but I don't know why. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Anas bin Malik narrated that the Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, said, When Mu'ad was riding behind him on a mount, O oh, Mu'ad, he said, Here I am at your service, O Messenger of Allah. He said, O oh, Mu'ad, he said, Here I am at your service, O Messenger of Allah. He said, O oh, Mu'ad, he said, Here I am at your service, O Messenger of Allah. He said, There is no one who bears witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. But Allah will forbid him the fire. He said, O Messenger of Allah, should I not tell the people about it so that they may rejoice? He said, Rather, they will complacently rely on it 
Someone narrated it when he was dying so as to absolve himself of responsibility. Okay, I think this one by Nas bin Malik has like, I, I think, I don't know, that one seems like to have a really nice finish there. It's like dying to absolve himself of responsibility. It's pretty clever. Very interesting ending. Because, I mean, then it's like you're on your deathbed, you don't have to go around hearing everyone using it for any willy-nilly thing, right? But at least he said it be instead of just taking it to the grave, you know? Mahmoud bin Rabi said, I came to al Madina, and I met Itban bin Malik. I said, there is a hadith that has reached me from you. He said, something happened to my eyesight, so I sent word to the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, saying, I would like you to come to me and pray in my house, so that I may take that spot as a prayer place. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, and whomever Allah willed of his companions came. He entered and prayed in my house, and his companions were talking among themselves. They spoke of the hypocrites and their evil, and the Muslims suffering as a result of that. And they attributed most of it to Malik bin Dukshum. Malik bin Dukshum. Wow. And they wished that the Prophet, peace be upon him, would pray against him, and he would die. And they wished that some calamity would befall him. Okay, let's put that in brackets. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, finished his prayer and said, Does he not bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that I am his Messenger? They said, He says that, but not from the heart. He said, No one who bears witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that I am the messenger of Allah went to hell, nor will its flames touch him. Anas said, I like this hadith, and I said to my son, write it down, so he wrote it down. Mm. That's a good one for, it's like, against your fellow Muslims. You know, you have to, you don't know what's in someone's heart, you don't watch out. Very interesting. Itban bin Malik narrated that he became blind. So he sent word to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, saying, Come and designate a place where I can pray in my house, but you're praying in it. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, came with his people, and a man from among them called Malik bin Dukashim was absent. Then he quoted a hadith similar to number 149, Suleiman bin al-Mugira. Oh man, there's a name I like, al-Mugira. I think I can do Um Al Mugira. Can I do that? Tell me. Okay, so look though. This one, it was like, come and designate a place where I can pray. That one, I, th I think, is very more clear. More clear. Because when I first heard it, I was like, oh, if he sits in a particular spot and then people want to do it where he did it, does that then become like a bida? Like, like, uh, you're not supposed to, like, make things up. I don't know. Like, he doesn't want you to take his place of, of his grave as a, as a ritual spot. If you have a spot where he prayed, and then you only want to pray there just because he did, wouldn't that become a form of Bida? But here, I like, what I like about it is that it says, oh, because he's blind, and maybe he'll just always know that that's the direction of the Kaaba. Right? At least that's what I think. We'll have to ask another scholar. But I picked that up. What about you, fam?